Hey everybody, welcome to Can Hammer, your source for 40K from the Great White North. I'm very happy to be able to give you my read along for the new Codex Adeptus Astartes Space Marines. So uh, this was just released today and uh, we're gonna do our read along of it. And uh, uh, what I'm gonna do is read along, give you my thoughts as usual. We'll try and compare it to the index so we can see what has changed. A number of things have changed and uh, then you'll have a better idea about uh, these books. Uh, before I do that, I'm just gonna say that I'm gonna have a quick look at these data cards. So these data cards are the new, another thing that's come out today uh, for your Space Marines. So let's just uh, rip them open. I'm not even sure I remember uh, a GW kind of spoiling these, but here they are. And so basically these are your tactical objective cards, um, which you can use if you're Space Marines. Uh, they kind of replace those other cards if you're just playing Space Marines, but I, I reckon probably most of them are the same and some of them will be a little bit different probably. Uh, then, uh, so you know, that's useful if you want. But here is what I think is really useful. There's 26 or 29 new stratagems. And instead of lugging your book around and looking through that page and trying to find them, you could just pick the cards out of the ones that you want to use in the game because not all of them will apply to you or be restricted. And then you could just put these cards beside you and then you won't forget what they are and how much they cost and, and you won't forget to use them. So I think these are very useful to get. The stratagem cards, you can see there's a lot of... These are all stratagem cards, so I think there's like 26 cards in there or something, so that's useful. Um, and then, like before, you have the Psychic Power cards, of which there are now six, and Smite. So, probably not that useful, uh, but for sure the stratagem cards are useful and may be worth picking up just for that, if you think. Okay, let's go right on to Codex Space Marines. So this Codex replaces the index for uh, space Marine faction. Okay, so uh, Adeptus Astartes does not include Dark Angels, Space Wolves, and Blood Angels, Grey Knights, and Death Watch. They'll be getting their own codex, and in there, it's, there are restrictions in terms of what you can use from this book from those other factions. So this is mainly for the main Space Marine factions. So let's get started. As usual, I'm going to be skipping all the fluff, but there's a lot of fluff in here. Um, and uh, new stuff about the Primaris as well, uh, about the founding chapters and all the successors, lots of fluff in here. So read through it all at your leisure for sure. In fact, as usual, let me tell you how much of the book is actually fluff and how much of it is rules. Okay, that's where the rules start, 130 pages in out of a 208 page book. So it's really uh, two thirds, um, is uh, fluff. Well, that's usually how it is. So, uh, the first thing to note are these new rules. So first of all, it tells you about the chapter keywords as usual. And then uh, the, the fact that uh, Black Templars can't use librarians, can't use psychers, and uh, they shall know no fear. None of that has changed. The first thing you hear is the war gear list, and that's pretty much what we had before. But note this. Uh, there are no longer any auto cannons anywhere. In fact, the only thing that can now take an auto cannon is the Predator with the Predator auto cannon. Everything else has lost auto cannons. So your dreads can no longer have auto cannons. Um, yeah, heavy weapons, auto cannons are not under there. Uh, so that's something that's a change. Uh, so if you're running dreadnoughts in your Space Marine chapter with uh, twin auto cannons, you cannot do that anymore. All right, let's go in. So we're going to compare here if we can. So let's look at Kalgar. So Kalgar Here we go. So Kalgar is now only uh, 10 power instead of 13 power. And uh, he's basically unchanged. Uh, otherwise, and uh, yeah, unchanged. So what's interesting is that uh, this is no longer an option, Marnius Calgar and Artificer Armor. Um, so uh, that's no longer an option, he's come down in power. 
Tigerius, I believe, is pretty much unchanged. And uh, Cassius has come down in power to 5 power. And uh, Sicarius is uh, the same. What I'm going to do is I'll just uh, have this up there for my own reference, but I won't show you those pages. There you go. Cronus is no longer a, uh, he's plus two power only now, and I believe he came down in points, but we'll see. And uh, Tellian has gone up, I believe. He's gone up in points and down in power. And you know what's not in here is the Terminus Ultra. Uh, I do not believe there is a Terminus Ultra anymore. So for everybody who is running Terminus Ultra, uh, I'm sorry, you can't run it anymore. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so here are the other uh, chapter masters. I'm not going to go over them here. You can have a look at these uh, data sheets if you like. You can pause the video as usual. So here's one I want to point out. So Khan, Let's go over to, uh, just to make sure, over in the index to White Scars. So Khan can no longer take his bike Moondraken. He is just foot slogging Khan, and, uh, and there he is. So uh, that's a bit of a blow to White Scars players. You have a biker army, or supposed to be biker army, with stratagems devoted to bikers, yet you can't take your chapter master on a bike. So I'm not sure, I think what they tried to do with this codex was to get rid of models, uh, get rid of rules for things that did not have models. So you couldn't buy Khan on a bike before, you'd have to convert one, or of course now you can use that uh, White Scar Death Watch Librarian, which is a pretty good con. Uh, so they've got rid of everything that didn't have GW models. So that's why the auto cannons were gone, because I believe that all the auto cannon arms for things are Forge World, in fact. Uh, and that, oh, the things that come with auto cannons are actually Imperial Guard stuff or Astro Militarum stuff. So they got rid of stuff that didn't have models. And so all the um, or we'll come to that in a second. Um, so let's just keep going here. So Vulcan, Shrike. You can still get a captain on a bike. And here's the new Primaris captain. So the new Primaris captain is basically the same as a normal captain, uh, except with an extra wound and an extra attack. And he has a different, uh, different bolt gun, like all the Primaris, and he's more expensive. Same with the Primaris Librarian, same as the normal Librarian, but with an extra wound and an extra attack. And he also can attempt to cast and deny... Um, oh no, so the normal Librarian can do two powers as well. So really the only difference is you're paying extra for an attack and a wound. Which might be worth it, uh, if you like. So here we are. Uh, so you'll note that the Librarian can no longer have a bike. Here's the chaplains, and you'll also note again that the chaplains no longer have bikes. So again, getting rid of things that you had to convert that they don't have stock models for. Primaris chaplain, same again, except extra wound and extra attack, which might have more relevance for a chaplain. Tech Marine, uh, of course, no bike. Otherwise unchanged. And Lieutenant now comes just normal Lieutenants and Primaris Lieutenants. So these are the cheaper ones. They still give the same reroll ones to wound, so that might be a good option. Uh, unless you want the extra wound and attack and the special weapon, which most people were running these guys just for the rerolls to one. So there you go, save some points. Tax squads, intercessors, scout squads are unchanged. Crusaders, I believe, are unchanged. And then you have the Primaris Ancient and the Chapter Ancient. Champion, Honor Guard, Company Ancient, Apothecary. So the Apothecary, again, no Apothecaries on bikes. So these are the new Reavers. So the new Reavers are pretty interesting. So they're kind of like scouts. They can grass shoot in. 
Um, but you have to pay for the grass shoots. So models may take grass shoots. I believe they're like two points or something. So you do have to pay for the grass shoots, but it allows you to deploy uh, to deep strike basically. And then these grapnel launchers allow you to move upwards at the same speed as, so, as like you ignore vertical. And they have these bolt carbines, which are assault two uh, bolters. And they also have heavy bolt pistols, which are four with a minus one AP. They're bolt pistols with minus one AP. Um, and shock grenades make people minus one to hit. So that's decent. You can use them just to shock people. Um, so yeah, I, I really like the models anyway. Um, so I'll probably pick some up, but um, these are the new Reavers. And they're two wounds, so not too bad. Uh, these are the aggressors, so these are the Primaris Centurions, basically. Uh, so they've got decent stats. They've only got two wounds, toughness five. Only a three plus save, so they're not as tough as Centurions. And you'll notice that all their weapons are fairly short range. So 18 inches is the longest weapon. And they're like flamers and uh, bolters and stuff like that. And they're all just strength four, no AP, and one uh, damage so not that strong but they're pretty strong in melee we're talking strength 8 minus 3 d3 but you have to subtract 1 uh, from the hit rolls because they're like uh, fists so uh, now they can fire twice if they remain stationary um, however uh, it's short range so there you go might be worth uh, sticking these guys in a vehicle for sure Terminators, Terminator Assault Squads, let you have a look at those. Cataphracti and Tartaros Terminators, let you have a look at those. Vanguard Vets, so I'm interested in these guys because Vanguard Vets, um, any Space Marine veteran can replace their pistol and chainsword with a um, plasma pistols or take two plasma pistols so these guys are more expensive obviously than assault marines but that might be good you deep strike with 10 of these guys there's 20 plasma pistols in there drop them in with a captain and uh, that'd be pretty fun um so i'm thinking of making a list with uh, maybe three or four groups of five of these guys all plasma pistols with shrike so give them Raven Guard, so they all reroll to hit, reroll to fail charges, and they all deep strike in on turn one. So that'd be pretty cool. Um, anyway, Stern Guard Veterans, I don't think any of these things have changed. And the Dreadnought, the only thing you'll see, obviously, in the Dreadnought cannot take auto cannons. Here's the Ironclad. And the Venerable. And the Contemptor. And the new Redemptor. So the new Redemptor is here. Is a bit of a beast. Three more wounds than a normal Dreadnought. Uh, four more wounds. And uh, same profile otherwise. Um, and uh, a massive, really cool model. Still an elite slot. and But he's got some cool weapons. So this heavy onslaught Gatling cannon, which it comes with as standard, is basically a quad heavy bolter. So heavy 12, 5 minus 1, 1. Uh, it has a heavy flamer if you want. And it has this Icarus rocket pod, which is a uh, strength 7, minus 1, 1, uh, and plus 1 to hit against flyers. So heavy D3, so that's pretty decent. Now it can't, uh, if it moves, it gets minus one to hit. So keep that in mind with all these heavy weapons. Then it has this macro plasma incinerator, which is heavy D6 uh, and then eight minus four and one damage in its standard heavy D6. So that's pretty sweet. It's like a D6, uh, it's, it's like a half supercharged normal plasma gun. And then if you supercharge, it goes up to strength nine with two uh, damage, but you suffer a mortal wound uh, automatically. And then um, the Onslaught Gatling Cannon is just a half version of the heavy one. And then the Fist is standard Dreadnought times two strength, uh, minus three and D6 damage. So uh, he's a pretty beefy Dreadnought. He has the smoke launchers and um, uh, we'll see how many points he is when we get to the end. But I like this guy. I'm going to try running him uh, just to see what he's like. I might just use the model as a normal Dread as well. Those, uh, it's quite a lot bigger than a normal Dreadnought. Here's the Centurions, they haven't really changed. Bike Squad. 
Assault Squad. So here it clarified the FAQ that two Space Marines can replace Bolt Pistol and Chainsword with a Flamer or Plasma Pistol and Chainsword. Let's just compare the Assault Squad to the Vanguard Vets. Just for fun. So uh, 3 plus 3 plus 4, 4, 4, 4. So Vanguard Vets um, have extra attacks, so 2 and 3 as opposed to 1 and 2. Their leadership is 8 and 9 as opposed to 7 and 8. Um, but otherwise, uh, they're fairly similar. And these guys are fast attack, obviously, and Vanguard Vets are, are elites. Land speeders and attack bikes. Okay, so they've added in the new Inceptors with the Plasma, the Plasma Exterminator for the Inceptors. So you drop them in, 18 inch Assault D3, uh, seven minus three and one. So just classic Plasma then, eight minus three and two, and, um, and then you die. So uh, there's just 18 inch Plasma guns, short range Plasma guns, but Assault D3. So that's okay, I guess. Devs, so the other thing about devs is now you buy the cherub, but the cherub is free, or it doesn't say a cost for the cherub anymore, whereas it used to be five points. So that's a little bit of a boost for devs. Centurion devs. Hellblasters. Uh, so there's some more options here for the Hellblasters. Uh, let me see if that was in before. I don't believe it was. Let's see, Hellblasters. Hellblasters, yeah, so in the old index, they only ever had this plasma incinerator. Now they can have an assault plasma incinerator, which is assault two, uh, but weaker. They can have the heavy, the normal plasma incinerator, which is, uh, you know, rapid fire. And then they have the heavy plasma incinerator, which is heavy but stronger. And then they have plasma pistols, too. So these guys are just rocking out in plasma. Um, so, but that's a lot of good options. You can decide what you want to do with them in terms of close or longer range. So here's the Thunderfire Cannon. So the change to the Thunderfire Cannon is that the it now does minus one AP on it. So you see there, heavy 43, strength five, minus one, one damage. Hunter and Stalker, I don't believe I've changed. Uh, Whirlwind, the Predator. So the Predator still has Predator Auto Cannons. Uh, which are heavy 2d3, 7, minus 1, th straight up 3 damage. So it's decent. It's definitely decent. Vindicator. And your Land Raider. Land Raider and Variants. Here's your Crusader. Redeemer. So Rhino, and the question on everybody's mind, can the Razorback still take twin assault cannons? And yes, it can. There it is. Drop pod, unchanged and unused. Land speeder storm. So here's the new tank, the Repulsor. Get a look at the data sheet there. So it's basically a Land Raider. So it's toughness 8, 16 wounds, which is basically uh, what a Land Raider is. Except it's only got three plus saves, so it's not as hard to kill as a Land Raider. It doesn't have an inbound. Uh, it does have power of the machine spirit. And it has this repulsor field, which means if you charge it, you get your minus two to your charge. So that's okay. Um, and then it has a whole bunch of weapons. The Onslaught Gatling Cannon again, which again is just a quad heavy bolter. Um, and then it has twin heavy bolter on top of that, which you can swap out for LAS cannons. It has this Iron Hail Heavy Stubber, which is basically a heavy three, four minus one, one. Uh, you can replace it with a Onslaught Gatling Cannon. Uh, you can replace the heavy onslaught Gatling cannon with a Laz Talon, which is a heavy two, 
uh, heavy two uh, las cannon. So basically a twin las cannon. Nine minus three d6. So how is the las talon different from just a twin las cannon? Uh, so you can so you can make it into a quad la uh, six las cannon. So each twin heavy bolter can have a twin las cannon, and the he uh, heavy onslaught Gatling cannon can be replaced with a las talon, which is basically a 24 inch twin las cannon. So you got four there, and still get your Gatling tube storm bolters, uh, and the frag storm grenade launcher, which is uh, assault D6 bolter basically. And it has auto launchers, which are another, what they renamed smoke launchers. So they introduced all these new weapon names when in fact the profiles are exactly the same as existing weapons. Maybe they should have just stuck to the same names, but anyway. And of course this thing can transport only Primaris Infantry 10 and no jump pack models. So, uh, and no normal models can go in here, only Primaris. So there you go. It's basically the Land Raider for Primaris. We'll see how many points it is. It's probably Land Raider points. Stormhawk and the Storm Raven unchanged. Storm Talon. This well, this book was probably printed before all the Storm Raven spam became apparent. And Gilliman is unchanged, I believe. Let me see. So Gilliman, 18 power. Yeah. So he's basically unchanged. Okay, so these are just weapon profiles which are unchanged. Okay, so let's talk about chapter tactics. Okay, so um, you get chapter tactics if uh, Space Marine units... Okay, so it says here specifically that uh, Blood Angels, Space Wolves, and Dark Angels, uh, and those kind of chapters do not get any rules and abilities listed in this section, which is basically the chapter tactics, all the stratagems, warlord traits, and uh, psychic disciplines. Reggie, Reggie's interested in chapter tactics. Reggie, what's your chapter tactic? What's your chapter tactic, Reggie? What's your chapter tactic, Reggie? Hmm? Are you like Robu Gulliman? Are you, you could one you could one shot whole armies right with your uh, Titanic claws. <laughs> anyway, back to the topic at hand. So, uh, Defenders of Humanity is the new name for Objective Secured. Uh, if your army is battle forged, all troop units in Space Marine detachments gain this ability. If you're within range of an objective marker to control it. You control it even if there are more enemy models within range. If enemy units have the same ability, then whoever has more models control it. So that's basically one Marine or Scout can hold an objective from an unlimited number of non-objective secured models. So there we go. Obsec is back. So I'm thinking of running a list with kind of five or six Assault Cannon Razorbacks with just bare tacks in it. Um, and uh, Shrike and some Assault Squads just to come in and uh, deal with things and I think that might be fun. Uh, we'll see. So chapter tactics. So if you are battle forged and using one of these, Reggie, Space Marine uh, uh, companies, you get a chapter tactic and it depends, You're all the uh, models in that detachment will have to be from the same chapter and you get these chapter tactics. Uh, servitors do not get chapter tactics, sorry about that guys. And uh, successor chapters use the founding chapter. So here we go, uh, everybody's seen these already but we'll just go over them quickly. Ultramarines get plus one leadership. Reggie. Ultramarines get plus one leadership and they get to uh, shoot if they fall back with a minus one to hit. And combined with Gulliman, who can also do that because he is infantry, um, then that's pretty strong. That's probably one of the strongest. Uh, so White Scars add two inches to their uh, advances. So because if you're using bikes, then that's an auto eight advance. And then uh, they can charge even if they fall back, which is okay, but generally, yeah. And anyway, that's, that's a pretty tactical, cool rule. Uh, Imperial Fist probably got the short end of the stick here. Um, 
You can ignore cover, which is okay. It depends on how much cover you're playing with. And you reroll failed wounds against buildings. <laughs> so not that useful unless people play in a lot of buildings. Black Tempers, reroll failed charges. Very fluffy. Salamanders, so this is the one I'm on the fence about. So they get to reroll a single failed hit and wound for each unit every time it shoots or fights. Uh, so that's basically a free command point for every unit to use in two different phases. That seems very strong to me. Um, and so if you run your tax with a las cannon, you use your reroll hit and rune roll for the las cannon every time. Um, so that seems quite strong to me. Other people don't seem to think it's very strong, but I think it's pretty strong. Um, Raven Guard is the one I really like. Uh, you subtract one from any hit rolls shooting at Raven Guard units that are more than 12 inches away. So it's kind of like their own portable Dark Shroud. Uh, I like that very much. Uh, I think it's very spicy and fluffy. And the Iron Hands, as predicted, get their 6 plus uh, Feel No Pain. Ignoring wounds and mortals on a 6. So there we go. So those are the main chapter tactics. So now there's a bunch of stratagems here. Now I'm gonna, not going to point them all out. I'm not going to read them all. You can certainly just look them over here. And then I'll go over a few that I, that I really like here. Most of these things have been spoiled already. So some of these are interesting. So this one says, for 1 CP or 3 CP, you can give someone extra relic or two extra relics. Um, a lot of these stratagems, actually, when I read them, are kind of the detachment benefits that you got in 7th, but are now stratagems and you can pay command points to use. Mm -hmm. Reggie. Mm -hmm. So here, line break and bombardment is with your Vindicators. So it's what used to be the detachment of three Vindicators. Now, if you do that, you can uh, basically give people 43 mortal wounds, which is pretty good. Uh, and you can do the same with Predators, three Predators one, lets them reroll wounds. Um, you can change one of your Captain into a Chapter Master for three command points. Um, and so that changes their reroll ones to hit into reroll all failed hits. So that's pretty spicy, obviously. Uh, but that does cost you three command points. Um, so, you know, there's like 26 stratagems, so people better be running stuff that gives them command points, otherwise you won't be able to use most of this stuff. Um, so this one, Sign of Gulliman, gives people rerolls uh, to hit, but if you have Gulliman near you, you probably don't need that. There's a, a bombardment here, orbital bombardment, for three command points. Um, White Scar Bikers, for one command point, can shoot and charge if they advance in that one unit for one CP. Sterngard veterans get their own and you see some of these are like back black templar only some of them are space marine stratagems any space marines can use so you just have to be careful when you're looking at it empiric channeling so this is basically your librarian's conclave so if you have three librarians within six inches of each other can immediately attempt to manifest an extra psychic power and you can add two to that test so it's like a channeling from the librarian's conclave Keep in mind, you can still only cast one of each power per turn uh, other than Smite, so maybe useful, maybe not. And you really have to plan your army around that to have three librarians. Uh, so this is that, uh, I can't remember what it used to be called in 7th, but basically your whirlwind auto hits if your land speeder can see it and is within 12 inches of the target. It's like lazing the target, and that used to be one of the detachment benefits. Bolter Drill uh, basically uh, gives you extra shots with any bolt weapon if you roll 6 plus to hit. Here's uh, Flame Craft for the Salamanders. Add 1 to wound rolls made for all flame weapons. And here are the rest of them here. I don't think anything here was too good. This one lets you, for one CP, ignore on a five plus, ignore wounds, but just one time um, on a vehicle. This one for three CP lets you fight in combat a second time. Okay, so here are the Warlord traits and a new um, 
uh, warlord traits. So let's see, Angel of Death, subtract one from leadership characteristics of enemy units within six inches. Imperium Sword, reroll failed charge rolls for your warlord. In addition, if your warlord charges, add one to his attacks. That's pretty decent. Uh, Iron Resolve, add one to the wounds of your warlord and roll a dice each team, you get a six plus ward save. So that, I like that one. So it basically gives you the six plus save like the previous warlord trait in the rule book, but also gives you an extra wound. Storm of Fire. Each time you roll a wound of six for a friendly chapter unit within six of the Warlord, AP because it's increased by one. Oh, I like that. That can make a whole bunch. Oh, so if you have your Warlord sitting there surrounded by Assault Razorbacks, uh, any wound rolls of a six become AP two. Oh, that is nice. I like that. Um, that's nice. Rights of War, friendly units within six inches of the Warlord automatically pass morale. Uh, no thanks, I already re-rolling. And Champion of Humanity, you can add one to all hit and wound rolls made for this Warlord in the fight phase when targeting characters. Not that useful. You don't often want to be charging into things with your Warlord in this edition. So that is definitely the winner here. Adding one to AP can make all the difference. It takes care of cover. Uh, it makes things from a four plus save into a five plus save. Uh, I really like that and I can see how that goes into a gun line really well. So chapter warlord traits. Uh, so these are named characters and warlord traits. The mightiest, if a named character is your warlord, they must be given the associated warlord trait of their chapter. So Marnius Kalgar, for example, uh, Ultramarine Warlords are Peerless Masters. Whilst your Warlord is alive, roll a dice each time you spend a command point. On a 5+, plus, you get it back. That's pretty good. Uh, White Scars. Uh, every time you finish a charge move, on a 4+, plus, you suffer mortal wounds. So that's like, uh, what's that called again? Uh, what was that ability called when you charge with a biker? You get to roll for a hit. Oh my god, I can't believe I can't remember that. Somebody put me out of my misery and comment below what the name of that... Uh, a Hammer of Wrath is a Hammer of Wrath. Uh, except it's a mortal wound. Uh, Imperial Fist. Uh, so friendly Imperial Fists receiving cover get an extra one against attacks with the AP characteristic of minus one. Okay, so it basically cancel minus one AP. Um, Crimson Fists. Uh, your Warlord, again, gets extra D3 attacks if he's surrounded by 10 models, i.e. he's going to die. And uh, Oathkeeper for Black Templars, you can perform heroic inventions within 6 inches and move 6 inches. Okay. Anvil of Strength. Add 1 to the Strength characteristic of your Warlord. Silent Stalker. Uh, so enemy units cannot fire Overwatch at your Warlord. Oh, that's cool. And uh, Merciless Logic. Each time you roll a hit roll of six for your Warlord, make one extra attack at the same target using the same weapon. Okay, overall those ones are not that good. I still like this Storm of Fire one the best. Okay, so here are the relics. So the important thing about the relics from what I was hearing is that you can't give it to a named character. Um, and it replaces an existing weapon. So you still have to pay for the weapon that it replaces. And it tells you in each one what it replaces. But you don't pay for the relic. The relic is free. Uh, but you pay for the weapon or equipment that it replaces. So here's the armor Indomitus. You get a two plus save uh, and a three plus invalm for one turn. Pretty cool. Uh, shield Eternal. So you replace the Storm Shield. So you have to pay for a Storm Shield. Uh, which is what, 15 points on characters? Uh, and then you get a 3 plus invuln and you have damage rounding up. That's pretty good, and it's no longer 50 points for a Shield Eternal. Uh, standard of the Emperor Ascendant. So, Company Ancient, Chapter Ancient, or Primaris Ancient. So, the standard guys, standard bearers. If a model has a standard, you can add one to the dice roll made to see if models within six inches can summon the strength to make one final. Okay, so I think it's like four plus, you get to attack again. This makes it three plus. In addition, Within six inches, you automatically pass morale tests and enemy units subtract one from their leadership. So, okay, so that does help. Um, and if you have nothing else to give a relic to, you might as well do that if you're running that ancient. Teeth of Terra. So this uh, replaces a chain sword, which is free. So this relic is basically free. Um, basically it's a plus one strength, minus two AP, two damage chainsword, and it can make D3 additional attacks. That's decent. 
Primarch's Wrath. So this replaces a bolt gun or a master crafted bolt gun. Um, and it's basically rapid fire 2, strength 5, minus 1, 2 damage. And the Burning Blade. The famous Burning Blade now replaces a power sword or a master crafted power sword only. Um, and is basically plus 2 strength. Uh, minus 5 AP. Wow, so that, that hits going through. Um, but uh, only 1 damage. So not too unreasonable. But yeah, no armor saves on that one. You're whacking land raiders with this baby. Okay, the Tome of Malkador. Psychers only. You get 1 additional power from the Librarius Discipline. The Salamander's Mantle. Uh, Salamander's only. You get increased toughness by one. That could make a big difference. Axe of Medusa is for iron hands only. If you have a power axe, you replace it and you get plus two strength, minus three AP, two damage. So a little bit better than a power axe. Raven's Fury. Uh, so jump pack models only. The bearer of the Raven's Fury can advance and charge in the same turn. Furthermore, the bearer can re-roll fail, re failed charge rolls. Okay. Well, if you're giving this to Shrike, he already has the ability to re-roll. Um, so you probably give it to like a captain or something like that. Mantle of the Storm Seer. So White Scar Psyker only. So very specific. White Scar Psykers. Add one to your psychic test when manifesting smite only. Fist of Vengeance. So Crimson Fists. This replaces your fist. And gives you times two strength, so it's the same. Minus three AP, so I believe that's the same. And straight three damage. Okay, so basically you've made your power fist into a thunder hammer, uh, which is worth it if you've got nothing else to do with the relic. And Sanctic Halo, so Ultramarines, Captain only. You have three plus invuln, and you can deny a psychic power. Pretty good. Crusader's Helm for Black Templars. Uh, increase the range of any aura abilities by three inches. Oh, that's sweet. But it's only for Black Templars. Otherwise, that would be sweet. Imagine Azrael's uh, four plus invuln going an extra three, nine inch radius. Uh, that would be sweet. Uh, the Spartan. So Imperial Fist models with a Bolt Pistol. The Bolt Pistol becomes four minus one, two damage. Uh, and you can target characters. Okay. So that's those relics. So I don't know if there's more. No, no there's no more. Uh, okay, so these are the new psychic powers. So three of them are the same. Veil of Time, uh, Might of Heroes, and Psychic Scourge are the same. The new ones are Fury of the Ancients. So Warp Charge 7, 3D6 against the visible model. Uh, you draw a line and any unit that line passes over suffers a mortal wound. And that's a bit lackluster because um, it's a random length and it's just one mortal wound at the end of the day. So not too great. Uh, psychic Fortress... Uh, War Charge 5, a friendly unit within 18 inches, automatically passes morale test and roll a d6 each time on a 4 plus that uh, mortal wound is ignored. Oh, it's only if they suffer a mortal wound from a psychic psychic power. So that is also not good. And Null Zone. Um, wait a second. I think Null Zone was one that we had already. Uh, Warp Charge value. Hang on. Let me check. Reggie's in the way. So we already have Veil of Time, Might of Heroes, and Null Zone. Yeah. So the one we don't have was Psychic Scourge, which is up here. So Psychic Scourge, Warp Charge 6, select a visible enemy unit within 18 inches, roll a D6, and add Psyker's Leadership. Your opponent then rolls D6 and adds the Leadership. If the score is greater than your enemies, suffer D3 Mortal Wounds. If it's equal, you score to one mortal wound, and if it's less than nothing. So that's okay. Jaws of the World Wolf is better. 3d6 against movement, and that, the difference in mortal wounds, that is way better than this. Um, but of course, that's Space Wolves only. Okay, and then you have all the objectives here, uh, which I won't go through. You can buy the objective cards or read them on your own time. Oh, these are uh, extra ones on top of the ones that you already have. Okay, let you have a look at those. Okay, uh, pardon Reggie's paw there. We're going to just quickly go through the points and tell you what's changed, okay? Uh, so, so far, uh, Captain and Terminator is down 17 points. Uh, ch -ch 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 
Librarian and Terminator armor is down two points. Librarian with jump pack uh, is the same. So the new lieutenant is 60, and the primaris lieutenant is still 70, so it's 10 point savings there just for the reroll wounds. And uh, otherwise, the tech marine is down from 70 to 45. So that's a 25 point saving on the tech marine, which makes it a super cheap, it's the cheapest HQ for sure. Especially if you don't take the, uh, the power action, you replace it just with a chain fist. Super cheap. Um, all the troops are the same. Uh, the dedicated transports are over here. So the drop pod has come down from uh, 103 to 93, so 10 points cheaper on the drop pod. And uh, Land Speeder Storm is 10 points cheaper. Razorback Rhinos are the same. And the new Repulsor is 210, and it's a dedicated transport. So it's not a heavy, so uh, you can spam them if you want for 210 points. Just to give you a clue, Land Raider, the basic Land Raider, the cheapest Land Raider is 239. So it's 29 cheaper than a Land Raider with the same stats, except as 3 plus armor instead of 2 plus armor. So, uh, so that's decent. Okay, let's go back to Elites now. So the new aggressors are 25 each in squads of three to six. Um, apothecaries are the same. Uh, so Centurion Assault Squad went down from 73 to 53. So 20 points cheaper for Centurion Assault Squads. Let's, sorry, move this over. Reggie's in the way. Uh, ancients and things are the same price. Chapter Ancient, Chapter Ancient. Uh, yeah, so all those things are the same price. Uh, Contemptor Dreads, same price. Dreadnoughts, Honor Guard. Okay, so the Ironclad has dropped from 120 to 80. 40 point drop, 30% reduction for the Ironclad Dreadnought. It was 120 and now it's 80. Primaris Ancient, everything else is the same. So Reavers are 18 each, which makes them seven points more than Scouts. Um, everything else is pretty much the same. Venerable Dreadnoughts are the same price. Fast attack. Um, so bikes came down. Bikes were uh, 31 each and now they're 25 each. So bikes are definitely cheaper now by six points. And attack bikes went from 45 to 35. So uh, it's way uh, down 10 points for attack bikes. And uh, Inceptors have come down from 45 to 30, so that's a big drop for Inceptors. And Land Speeders went down 10 points from 80 to 70s. Um, so that's a drop for Land Speeders and Scout Bikes went down 2 points. Okay, so Flyers. So all the flyers are the same price. Storm Raven did not get uh, did not go up in price, guys. Sorry about that. Uh, so here it says armor cherub is uh, five points. Oh, so I thought there wasn't points for it before, but there is. It's just different from the Devastator Squad, whereas before it was underneath there. So yeah, cherub is still five. Devs are the same. Centurion assaults went from uh, sixty-five. No, Centurion Devastators went from sixty-five up to 80. So they are one of few units that went up in price. Devastators. Centurion Devs. Uh, Hell Blasters came down two points and uh, all the Land Raiders are the same. Uh, predators came down from 102 to 90. 12 points cheaper for a Predator which which is awesome. Thunderfire Cannon uh, went up from 28 to 55 points. And you still have to pay for the gunner, but the gunner came down 10 points. So that's still a net increase of about 20 points for a Thunderfire Cannon. And Whirlwinds uh, have come down to 75 from 90. And uh, Vindicators went from 160 to 135. So that's pretty cool. Okay, uh, name characters. Let's see who has changed. So, so Chaplain Cassius went from 138 to 98. He dropped 40 points, Chaplain Cassius. Reggie, stop eating my index. Uh, everybody else is the same. So Khan lost his bike. Uh, and he's the same points on foot, but he doesn't have the option to take the bike anymore. Kalgar dropped 50 points because, of course, now he can't take the Artificer armor. He dropped 50 points to 200. Everybody else is the same price. Oh, Sergeant Cronus went from 58 to 35. And Tellian went from 75 to 89. So he, Tellian has gone up in price. Um... 
uh, one of only two things that have gone up so far, 75 to 89 points. Heston is the same. And there's no Terminus Ultra. Okay, uh, so now we're gonna look at the weapon costs to finish this off. And uh, here are the war gear costs for the weapons. And uh, just looking through these, it doesn't look as anything has changed. And here are the war gear costs for this page. So just looking at uh, main things that people like to take. So let's see. Um, so Graph Cannon is still 28. Uh, Plasma is 30. Uh, last Cannons are still 25. Melted Guns are still 17. Missile Launchers are still 25. Multi Melt is 27. Um, Plasma pistols is still 7, and Plasma Guns are 13. And Sniper Rifles are still 4. Storm Bolts are still 2. Twin Assault Cannons are still 35. Twin Heavy Bolts are still 17. Uh, and, uh, yeah, those are the big ones. Typhoon Missiles are still 50. Camel Cloaks are still 3. Uh, Storm Shields are still 5 and 15. Just 2 points for those new Grav Shoots. Uh, okay, and melee weapons wise, uh, I think the only thing that changed here was that the Power Fist has gone down to 12 points from 20, and the Thunder Hammer has gone up 1 point to 21 for characters or 16 for non-characters. So they've gone up 1 point. So the difference on a character between a Thunder Hammer and a Power Fist is now 9 points. So that's the difference that you were paying to get 3 damage instead of D3. So there you go, it's 9 bucks, nine bucks cheaper. So there you go guys, there's my quick read along of the Space Marine Codex. Uh, please give me your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, thank you for joining me today and uh, we'll see you next time.